We're going to develop the wave equation once again. Uh, we've developed the equation from a couple perspectives. Uh, the equation is in the same form, of course, but um, there are some constants that emerge that differ depending on the approach that we took. Uh, we looked at an example of a propagating plane wave and the particle displacement associated with that uh, plane wave perturbation. And we ended up with the, well, the standard form of the wave equation is the relationship between the second spatial derivative and the second temporal de derivative. And there is a constant of 1 over v squared in term in, in front of the uh, second temporal derivative. That constant was the reciprocal of the velocity squared. And uh, in the case of the vibrating string, we had uh, uh, the velocity was the square root of the ratio of the uh, tension over the density. So, so the, the, this is um, a different perspective that we're going to going to take. We're going to look at these uh, stress strain relationships here to begin with, and um, again, just note that we see relationships to propagation velocity, stress in the form of tension, density changes. Now we're going to look at it uh, in, in a stress-strain perspective. And uh, of course, I don't have to remind you that uh, stress is force per unit area. It's actually a vector. Uh, the vector attributes or characteristics are often um, not specifically noted. Uh, but we do have normal and tangential components on any particular face or cut through an object. And these are sometimes referred to as dilatational and shear uh, stress directions. So we're defining the stress in this case as the as a small change in force over a small area, so we're looking at it locally. And we write this uh, in a particular direction as the stress in a particular direction is the change in the force in that direction over the small area that it's uh, acting on. So in this case, the subscript x indicates the stress in the x direction. And uh, again, since these stresses can be normal or, or tangential, we often write the stress with a double subscript uh, to indicate the normal direction, in this case x, and the particular tangential direction, which could be either y or z. So that we have, in this case, a force acting in the on the surface whose normal is pointing in the x direction, uh, but this is going to be a tangential stress in this case, uh, parallel to the surface, and uh, so that we have a, uh, a shear stress in this particular case. Now we're looking at the deformation of an object here, so we have a rectangular shaped object, and we've extended it. So. Uh, you can see that the extension is exaggerated here. We have an extension du over 2 on the uh, right and uh, du over 2 on the left, so a total extension of du. And this is, extension is in the x direction, and the constant of proportionality between the uh, extensional stress S x x is equal to the Young's modulus, in this case, times du dx. So a standard Hooke's law, we'd have a relationship between the force and the uh, extension. And in this case, where we're looking at stresses, we have Young's modulus in here. So we're looking at the elongation in the x direction. And uh, it's accompanied by contractions in the y and z directions. And these contractions are proportional to Poisson's ratio. So that would be a ratio of the transverse to longitudinal strain. So we can see over here that we've extended the, uh, we've stretched this, this object uh, by, uh, uh, we've increased its length by du. And remember these, this is very much exaggerated. So these differential uh, extensions are, are infinitesimally small. So we assume that when we're looking at a wave propagating through the subsurface that these um, uh, extensions or contractions or shear displacements are, are very small. 
So this elongation is in the x direction, so we have a uh, du dx term here that is our s uh, sub x x. And, uh, but we also have, because we have these contractions in the z in the y direction, we have uh, uh, a relationship uh, between those contractions and the normal stress on the uh, face whose normal is pointing in the x direction, uh, which is in proportion to sigma, the Poisson's ratio, times that stress. And similarly, for the z direction, we have this dw, dw dz. So dv, dy, dw, dz, and then the constants of proportionality are the same, uh, Young's modulus. So we're just noting here down here, this is a, a footnote. We're noting that these strains are often um, abbreviated, uh, the d, du, dx, dv, dy, dw, dz, uh, are abbreviated in terms of uh, epsilon sub x, epsilon sub y, and epsilon sub z. Same thing, uh, these are the strains in the x, y, and z direction. So we're assuming this rectangular volume, it has a, um, uh, you know, the volume element is dx, differential volume element is dx, dy, dz, so a very small volume before strain. Uh, the resultant volume after strain is the we could break it down into the x, y, and z components of um, the strains. We have a dx times 1 plus epsilon sub x times dy times 1 plus epsilon sub y times dz times 1 plus epsilon sub z. This will just give us dx, dy, dz times 1 plus the, the, the product of these three terms here. 1 plus epsilon sub x times 1 plus epsilon sub y times 1 plus epsilon sub z. So if we carry out this multiplication and rearrange things, do a little bit of algebra, we get the initial volume over here, dx dy dz times 1 plus, and then we have these different uh, terms in here which have been grouped. We have a summation of the strains in the x, y, and z direction. And here we have, and I haven't written them all out, but we have the products, cross terms, epsilon sub x times epsilon sub y, epsilon sub x times epsilon sub z, and so on. And then over here on the end, we have epsilon sub x times epsilon sub y times epsilon sub z over here. Now, the point to be made is that since we're assuming that we have these infinitesimally small strains, we're just going to ignore these higher order terms, these uh, second and third order terms here. These, If this is really, really small, and that's what we're assuming here in, in the differential limit, then we can ignore these terms and uh, get, a, get a fairly accurate approximation. So what we do here is basically just equate the strain to the volume times epsilon sub x times plus epsilon sub y plus epsilon sub z, this, uh, ignoring these uh, higher order terms. So here we have the initial volume plus the initial volume times the uh, differential uh, strain. So we have V plus delta V. And delta V over V, we can write as V plus delta V, the strain volume, minus V, the original volume, divided by V. And that just gives us epsilon sub x plus epsilon sub y plus epsilon sub z. So this is basically our delta V over V. This is our du dx dv dy plus d w d z. So a little uh, aside there, but then when we look at these three stresses in combination, we end up with a relationship here if we do the algebra and sum them all together so that we look at the uh, total strain under a hydrostatic pressure. We have Young's modulus times, and again we're just using this uh, approximation here. Remember, and We get the uh, delta V over V, so this is our change in volume over the original volume delta V over V. And if we do the algebra, we get uh, 1 minus 2 sigma times the normal stresses S sub x, x, S plus S sub y, y plus S sub z, z. So and again, since we're assuming hydrostatic stress, all these stresses are the same. And we could refer to that as a delta P or a P. And I'll just use P in this case so that we have 
Young's modulus times the delta V over V, the change in volume relative to the initial volume, is equal to 1 minus 2 sigma. This is Poisson's ratio again. And then we just have 3 times P, the applied pressure. So again, just as uh, to be redundant here, this term is our delta V over, uh, over V. So the, uh, we, when we look at this relationship here, we, we see that this is just a delta V over V. And we can do some additional algebra. We can uh, divide through by uh, uh, delta V over V, and we can divide both sides by 1 minus, uh, or 3 times 1 minus 2 sigma to get these relationships here, where we have uh, P over delta V over V is equal to K is equal to E over 3 times 1 minus 2 sigma. And this K is, we're often, we'll be using that uh, hopefully cons uh, you know, consistently uh, as the bulk uh, modulus. And 1 over K then would be the compressibility. So we're going to try to adhere to this. I know we've been using K, and every now and then when we're looking at a solution to a wave equation, uh, K comes up as a wave number. So again, you just, you just have to keep in mind uh, what it is that you're talking about, but we're generally going to be using this when we're talking about physical properties of the object, we'll be using this to represent the bulk modulus. And if we go through the same development uh, using uh, uh, shear stresses, we find another relationship to the shear rigidity, which is equal to Young's modulus over 2 times 1 plus Poisson's ratio. So now we're just going to comment briefly on the geometry, the configuration of the system that we're going to use to develop the wave equation. Uh, we've got an initial volume here, and all this is exaggerated, but, but it's just, just to illustrate the, the different relationships. So we have a small volume over here. Um, it has a length u, and um, it's got a cross-sectional area of dA. And this, the stress at rest on this volume element here is S of x at its original location, undeformed location. Then this volume gets displaced a distance dx, or the sur this surface here gets displaced a distance dx here from this front surface to this front surface. And the object is extended in this case, so we're looking at extension to a new length of u plus du. And, and although this is very much exaggerated, remember this du is an infinitesimally small uh, change in, in extension, and we've just separated these out just to kind of make the uh, visual point. So we take the net force acting on the volume element uh, dx dA, and in that case it's going to be the uh, difference in the stresses times the area, so we just have x plus s of x plus dx minus s of x times dA, and that gives us a force, which is equal to rho dx dA times the acceleration, or d2u dt squared. So we're going to pause here for a minute. Uh, this is kind of the setup, and then we'll, we'll Come back briefly, and we'll develop the wave equation from this setup here. And you might just think about the relationship of the difference in the stress to the um, to the force here, and uh, perhaps see if you can come up with the um, with the wave equation from from this uh, this starting point. Anyway, thanks for joining us, and we'll we'll uh, continue on on the next uh, video.